So the 49ers have re-signed Debo Samuel. I know it's on your mind, Jose, and everyone watching. I mean, let's just recap. The Niners gave Debo Samuel a three-year, $71.5 million extension with $41 million guaranteed. It's the most guaranteed money that franchise has ever given out. His cap number next year will be only $8 million. But to get rid of him, his dead cap would be $35 million. And then in 2024, his cap number jumps to $28 million. That's 11% of the salary cap, or what it's projected to be. And to get rid of him would cost the Niners $26 million in dead cap and would free up only $2 million in cap space. They're locked in to a few years of Debo Samuel at a very high rate. And we don't know exactly what he's going to give them. But so far this year, it hasn't been great. Do you think the Niners messed up giving Debo Samuel the game? No, no. Here, you got Quack Boy Grant coming up with this over here about like, oh, should they resign him? Like, come on now. Look, the point I mean, the early returns haven't been great. I, I did agree. advocate. I said they should resign him. So I'm going full hypocrite here. But I'm starting to be like, oh, I, mean, I don't know. Like reacting and thinking about like, all right, it's been the first half. It's been pretty bad. So, I mean, it's been pretty bad. Yeah, exactly. Outside exactly. of like one game and one play, you know. Yeah. But look, let's. Look, the point of signing, of drafting good players is so you can extend them. So even though if it's looking like early returns, like not great, we don't panic. We don't sell at the first sign of a dip. Okay. Come on. That's what the rookies do. All right, we we just keep we just keep hanging in there. We hang on to our to our tickets. It's like it, it's gonna pan out. It's gonna pan out. Or what we do is we buy other stock to make us forget. <laughs> A.K. Christmas and forget that the first stock wasn't doing well. So that's that's what they're doing. So look, that, that, that's why I was like, okay, the Christian McCaffrey trade it frees them up. That way it, it still works out. Am I lagging? A little bit, but now you're back. You're back. You're back. You're back. No, it was you. It was you. 100% you. It's weird. It's all you. Know. Yeah. I feel that like McDonald's Wi Fi. I got the 7 Eleven Wi Fi. Yeah. So look, that's that's pretty much what it was is by investing in his player to get him. I'm not worried. Look, I'd be worried if, if you have McCaffrey and not only are, is it Debo not being able to get freed up, but they're also not using him. Now it's like, okay, what'd you get him for? Because then, you know, you got Christian McCaffrey. Is he just there now? Just stacking up checks, not making an impact. So that's when I'll start to get really concerned. It's too early to say the Niners shouldn't have re-signed Debo, but it, it is a little concerning to look at, at the fact that they really locked themselves in at least two years of this contract, and it doesn't look to me like he's going to be able to replicate that incredible season he had last year. No, that, um, was, so, that was a fairy tale. Come on. Yeah, like he doesn't play running back anymore. His like He doesn't play running back anymore. His, his route running isn't going to improve. His hands aren't going to improve. He's the screen god. He, he runs screens and slants, and he does them very well. But, man, he's going to make $28 million a year. They paid him to be the wide back, not the screen god. And so he still can make a positive impact on the team, but, man, he's expensive. And if he's hurt, they're going to be really, really regretting this. And if they feel like, hey, maybe we should trade Debo, nope, you could have done that last year. He requested a trade. Teams were interested. You could have got, like, a mid-first-round pick for him. You didn't want it. And now you're probably never, ever, ever going to get that for Debo Samuel again. So you made a decision. You got to roll with it. Hopefully he stays healthy and gives you something. Um, I don't know. It's something. It's interesting because all, every game yeah. he misses, every drop pass he drops, you're like, oh, $28 million a year, huh? Oh, uh, okay. <laughs> Sweet. Yeah. I would, say, I would say, like, look, just to, if we really want to look at the big picture again, like, at least dating back to when he was drafted, I mean, it's pretty much going back to the debate of should they sign him, should they re-sign him about, like, you know, back in March and April when right. he was his trade. And it's like, well, look at the body of work. First year, nice. It was it was, it was was a huge leap. You know, he got better. Second year, a wash. Injured. Wasn't really good. And yeah. then the third year was, like, majestical. So it's like, okay, great. So we've had one solid year, one bad year. One phenomenal year. Now it's like, what, what do we take? It, it's not, it, you kind of wish it was like DK Metcalf and AJ Brown who was like consistent, 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 consistent. I actually just wrote down AJ Brown because I want, yeah, what AJ I wanted Brown, to say was, I remember people were saying AJ, like deep, like, no, first of all, AJ Brown's been the best receiver of that class and he's the most deserving of, of, of any yeah. of the three who should have got more money. I great deep, I get, I get, I get Debo had the greatest year last year and probably the greatest year that any of the, of any of the last four years that uh, DK and AJ had, but ultimately, Look, it's about what have you done throughout your career, not what have you done for me just last season. 
Also, AJ has always been a better wide receiver than yes. Debo. Debo had an amazing like all around year. But what I wanted to say is it was so interesting. So the, the Niners and the Titans both had a big decision to make. Niners had Debo, Titans had AJ Brown, same, same, same uh, agent. And the Titans are like, we're not going to pay AJ Brown. Even though AJ Brown always in tip top shape, never request. Did he request a trade? I don't know if he requested. Always in tip top shape, he, he made. He does it. have a little bit injury concerns. He gets a little bit okay, a little bit. But still, like the dude has like six percent body fat, and everyone knows it. And he, that's not a question with him. Like maybe he'll be five pounds overweight this year. No, so they trade him to Philly. Philly gets him for like a, the seventeenth pick in the draft, trade of the year. I mean, he's phenomenal. Great investment. The okay. Niners. It was, it was it was like a mid mid first right yeah, I mean it wasn't a, it was a mid first great that. trade and all of a sudden Tennessee looks dumb like why would you why would you trade AJ Brown I mean he's so consistent and he's gonna he's a really long future the Niners did the opposite decision they had Debo who they had questions about his fitness and his professionalism and all the maturity all this stuff and they're like you know what <sighs> let's give it to him and so far. It's looking like maybe Tennessee should have kept their wide receiver, and maybe the Niners should have been. But it's only it's only like two months in. But I wonder if the Niners are thinking about it. Like, damn, we really? I don't know. It was a big decision, and it seemed like they dragged their their feet on it the whole off season. It seemed like they had some misgivings about it, and now I. Yeah, I think a lot of this would have been better if Trey Lance just stayed freaking healthy, man. That God damn it, Kyle. I mean, look to me, it's just if. Cause it, I, it was really just like re-sign Debo so we can make Trey Lance's like life so much easier, and it's not really a lot of like this new offense. Not like it's a new look offense, but it's like all right, it's back to the you know let everyone else try to go off like completely at, at a five star level. Then it's like it's all right if you have an average game. It's like no, now you have everyone has to be like at their high demand because of the quarterback, and sometimes Kyle doesn't know what he's doing with them. Get the perfect uh, play call and execution right for his players. During the offseason, we talked about re-signing Debo. And if I remember correctly, you kept saying that he has to keep playing running back. They are not signing him to just be a wide receiver. Yeah. He has to still be. And so I agreed with that. And I think the Niners felt it was such a key element in their offense, they had to keep him. Well, it's gone. He's not a running back anymore. They replaced him with Christian McCaffrey. If they had known in April or whatever that, hey, this Debo running back thing is over. And he's just a wide receiver now. And you're going to replace that part of uh, the offense anyway with Christian McCaffrey. Would you still give 20 plus million to Debo to be just a wide receiver? I wonder. I wonder. You know what I'm saying? But I don't know. They'll, they'll still probably be, be the handoffs there. It's just, look, when, it, when, you see, when you see 19 lined up in the backfield, are you going to sell out for Brandon Ayuk or sell out for Debo Samuel? I think you want to sell out for Debo Samuel, the guy who's proven who can take simple negative yards, plays, and turn it into a massive gainer. So it's, to me, it's like when it's predictable and it's obvious, like I know it's yeah. who the ball is going to, you are like, you pretty much want half the play already. At that point, it's just executing it from a defensive standpoint. So I'm not really worried about where the ball is going to Kittle or Ayuk because is the quarterback even going to get it to them? He's probably not. Yeah. I want to say like one adjustment that the, the, the Niners could make coming out of the bye week is using Debo as a decoy. Debo the decoy out oh, of the backfield. You have Debo in the backfield and you have Christian McCaffrey in the slot or wherever, and you want to take eyes away from McCaffrey, fake the run to Debo or have him go. I mean, why don't you do that? It, it seems like, to your point, people are selling out to stop him. So I'd I'm like to see Debo the like decoy. A full, house, a full house formation where you got Mitchell on the left, Debo on the right, uh, McCaffrey the, the behind you, and then you have like some complicated motion. It's like, all right, motion him out. Let's see. Are you a man coverage, zone coverage? Okay, you follow man coverage. Now we'll put you out, McCaffrey, or whatever. Okay, cool. Box unloaded. Here you go, Mitchell. You're going against six people. Make a play. Or what you could have is you could do what Mike McDaniel's doing in, in uh, Miami where you have a bunch formation. Um, yeah. Three on one side, one on the side. You have McCaffrey in the backfield. You got Debo Samuel as like the inside slot receiver in the bunch running a, you know, a jet sweep before the play. So much stuff you could do just to get pe you know defense's eyes moving all around. I'd like to see that happen. I think this is what we said about this is why Kyle needs to look Kyle there's no excuses for you now like you have to get you, you have yeah. the pieces now you literally got it now there's no reason why you, can, you should not have this creativity and execution because it looks like you have pretty much all pro pro bowl calibers all around and if you can't get yeah. it right I'm not blaming the players I'm blaming, I'm blaming you. you because Mike McDaniel could figure it out with these guys I'm just saying. his first year yeah he, he could figure it out much, pretty much Polynesian Jimmy come on got to left handed left hand he's better than Jimmy He's, he's better, better than Jimmy. Jimmy. I mean, he's God, better. I used to, I used to, he, that's McDaniels. That's all McDaniels, the credit. 
And also, like, he's better, way better than Mac Jones. And a lot of people coming out were like, hey, Mac Jones is better than Tua. Nope! Not at all! That's really interesting to me. Two is way better than Mac Jones. Never. California Bear says, so you uh, happy that you pointed out that Kyle's potentially overrated the last few weeks. I've been pointing that out for years, but I love you, man. <laughs> the last few weeks. <laughs> no one is doing less with more like uh, us. You were the only one that had the courage to say it. I don't think he's a head coach. I don't think he's a head coach either. Um, the Niners have been working without a head coach for years, but maybe you don't need a head coach. I think you do. They're trying to prove that you don't really need, like player leadership can take you, or defensive coordinators can lead from behind. I don't know. Maybe. You know what, maybe it's possible. Just Saturday got hired. Kyle Shanahan's a head coach. Oh my god! I st- How did they do that? Jim Irsay is a quack. How's that? that just came out of left field, dude? This fool like was probably on his phone, went to his immediate contacts, like, who the hell can I hire? Hey, yo, Jeff, what are you doing this year, bro? What are you doing the rest of the year? All Christmas? You don't need that family. Come on, come on. <laughs> What, what California said, though, is he said he, only I have the courage to say he's not a head coach. I like saying things that people are afraid to say, and I like just bl- like blaring it. And so currently in the Bay Area, people are afraid to say that James Wiseman is the biggest bust ever. <laughs> so I said that the, for the last week, and now people are starting to like clear their throats and you know like say the truth. Afraid. It's just like almost like, are we sure it's not early? Are you yeah. the gun early? But it's year three, and I think people are afraid of like having those receipts pulled on them. It's like, I'm not afraid. There's so many receipts you could pull on me. For the Warriors because it's like, this is a championship team. Stop wasting Steph's like Hall of Fame career for this guy that you never know what's going to be. It's not worth it. Exactly. It's so not worth it. You don't have to do this. Giovanni says somehow Debo and the Eagles sounds more dangerous. With Jalen Hurts, that'd be nice. But yeah, if he's in, in if he's in shape, there, right? if he's 215 pounds, if he's catching the ball, if he's focused, all that. Yeah, Debo's great when he's on, which he hasn't quite gotten there yet. Again, two plays this year that stick out: Rams game, Seahawks game. Okay. That's it. Uh, decoy Samuel loading. Ha! Decoy Samuel. I love that. He should be a decoy until he gets his stuff together. <laughs>